The question is the amendment to be agreed to. The honourable member for Fadden. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. It's my great pleasure to speak on the amendment. The member for Cook has moved on the amendment by the member for Melbourne on the Migration Legislation Amendment Offshore Processing and Other Measures Bill. The 28th of June this year, the Prime Minister outsourced her job to a committee led by a distinguished Australian <coughs> former Chief of Defence Force Angus Houston. That decision was a symptom of a government that does not have a border protection policy. It does not know what it believes in. It does not know what to do. Air Marshal or Air Chief Marshal Houston retired, handed down the panel's report to the government yesterday, Monday. The committee's recommendation substantially endorses the coalition's approach on how we stop the boats. It confirmed unequivocally that pull factors created by Labor's policy were significantly responsible for the resumption of the people smugglers' trade after the abolition of the Howard government's successful and proven border policies. Angus Hewson said so in words like that the member for Throsby at the debate in the last sitting week prior to the winter recess made that point. The panel made 22 recommendations, including offshore processing on Nauru and Manus Island, to be established as soon as practical, introducing legislation to the parliament to allow offshore processing of illegal boat arrivals of designated countries and reserve to the parliament the provision to allow or disallow the legislative instrument, prohibit family reunion through Australia's humanitarian program for people arriving by boat and instead making boat arrivals apply for family reunion through the family stream of the migration program, turning back irregular maritime vessels can be operationally achieved and can constitute an effective deterrent to those ventures, noting, of course, they made the point as long as Indonesia acquiesces. Acquiescence is a fundamental word. Not approves, not endorses, but acquiesces. And lastly, the protection for asylum seekers set out in the Malaysian People Swap are inadequate. The panel by which and to whom this government outsourced one of the most fundamental provisions of any government, the security of its borders and the defence of the realm, has produced a report that solidly affirms what the coalition has been saying for almost half a decade. It is the proven Howard government policies that worked. When Labor came to, Parliament, came to power in 2007, there was less than a handful of people in detention, and I mean less than a handful. Four, to be precise, just four. How many today? number eclipses 4,000. The coalition has consistently argued for proven policies that work together to strengthen our nation's borders. Our policies on borders have worked. We know that because they worked under the Howard years. Combined together as a suite, they are an effective deterrent. They worked. The coalition in government will reintroduce offshore processing on Nauru because the rights of asylum seekers are protected, because where we know where people are every second of every day. We'll return to temporary protection visas because people will be safe but not granted permanent residency with all the benefits that go with it. We will turn back boats where it's safe to do so. The Sri Lankan Defence Force has shown it can be done. The Indonesians have done it recently. The US does it recently. We know it works because the Howard government did it in 2001, and the Houston panel report endorsed the policy where it is safe to do so. In a sentence, the outsourced panel, the Houston panel, gave a green light to Nauru and a red light to Malaysia. <clears throat> the simple fact is that if Prime Minister Gillard, frankly, had not been so stubborn, if she had not been so full of pride, the full cost of the failure of our borders could have been avoided, and the full cost is abhorrent. Over 22,000 people arriving illegally, self-selecting Australia, most of them travelling through numerous countries to getting here. Somewhere short of 1,000 tragic deaths, $4.7 billion in expenditure. Why? Because they took a proven solution and threw it away 
and pride stop them putting it back. For four years our borders have been weak and porous. Lives have been lost. Our reputation has been tarnished. Costs have blown out. Who knows what $4.7 billion could have been used for in the life of the nation. The NDIS, combined with the $5 billion from the states, could have been fully funded now. But for pride, for pride, it's staggering. Yesterday, the Houston panel fundamentally and categorically rejected the Prime Minister Gillard's rhetoric on Nauru. Australians have to wonder, <coughs> why didn't this happen years ago? Why was a successful policy regime pulled apart? It is a fair question to ask. Why the pretext that Nauru wouldn't work? Why the wild claims that it would cost billions to reopen? Why the stubbornness and why the pride? The good book remains true, Mr Deputy Speaker. Pride does indeed come before a fall. So much has been spent, so much has been lost because of pride. Prime Minister Gillard was against offshore processing and the Pacific Solution in opposition. <coughs> she made the point Labor will end the so-called Pacific Solution, the processing and detaining of asylum seekers on Pacific islands, because it is costly, unsustainable and wrong as a matter of principle, the Prime Minister said. But in government they changed their minds by negotiating with PNG, and here we are today. The Prime Minister said then, <coughs> there's no point getting on a boat because your claim won't be processed. But we, but we will continue to work through with Malaysia, <clears throat> and it's very clear to Australians we've been in discussions with Papua New Guinea. <coughs> in opposition, Prime Minister Gillard supported turning back the boats. It's the amendment. Supported turning back the boats. She said the Navy has turned back four boats to Indonesia. They were in seaworthy shape and arrived in, in Indonesia. It has made a big difference to people smuggling that that happened. And we think turning around boats <coughs> that are seaworthy, that can make the return journey and our international waters fits in with that. That's what the Prime Minister said <coughs> in opposition. But then, of course, she changed her mind and didn't support turning back boats in government. I speak of the claim often made by opposition politicians that they will, and I quote, turn the boats back. This needs to be seen for what it is. It's a shallow slogan. It's nonsense, the Prime Minister said. Well, let me say very clearly to the Prime Minister, as I said at the Defence Reserve Association conference last week to the assembled masses of the elite of our military, don't underestimate our resolve. We will turn back the boats where it is safe to do so. And the Prime Minister's own eminent panel yesterday showed that that is a deterrent. In opposition, Labor and Prime Minister Gillard supported temporary protection visas. They said the proposal in this document, Labor's policy, is that an unauthorised arrival who does have a genuine refugee claim would in the first instance get a short temporary protection visa. But now in government, the Rudd government is proud of its reforms in abolishing temporary protection visas. There is nothing consistent in the way the government has handled this entire debate. Nothing. When asked today in question time uh, by the member for Barara, Prime Minister, why did you dismantle the Pacific solution? All she could do was blame Kevin Rudd. It was the government's policy and, and Kevin is responsible. There is zero consistency in what they do and what they say. Now the Prime Minister is using the Houston panel as political cover. She's attempting to use it to whitewash over Labor's history of failed and erratic policies on border protection. The Leader of the Opposition said today 106 times, 106 times the request has been made, the call has been made, pick up the phone to the President of Nauru. And the Prime Minister did nothing until today when I gather the phone was picked up. But nothing, 
Nothing washes over the facts, and that's a good thing about facts. The Prime Minister and Labor can spin all they like. They can obfuscate till their proverbial cows come home, but facts will stand truly as a light on the hill of one of the wildest acts of incompetence of a government in living memory. And let's look through those facts. This government wound back and unwound and pulled apart the proven Pacific solution whereby when they came to power there were four people in detention. Since they abolished it, it has cost the nation $4.7 billion. Fact. The most, the most recent budget alone had a blowout in cost of $1.7 billion. Fact. Compared to the $85 million it cost in 0708 to manage asylum seekers arriving on illegal boats. If Labor had simply left in place the strong border protection regime they inherited from the, T the Howard government, the 12-13 budget would have been $3.3 billion better off. Fact. Since they unwound it, 22,000 people have self-selected Australia. Fact. On almost 400 boats. Fact. Almost 1,000 people. Uh, the Minister for Defence Procurement indicates about 4 per cent of people who have come on the journey have perished tragically at sea. Fact. That is the shameful record of this whole disaster. And now with the Houston report in front of them, with the knowledge of history that says offshore processing, temporary protection visas and turning back the boats where it's safe to do so, this government has only chosen one, Nauru. It's a good step. And heaven forbid we are thankful. But at the rate of one step every five years, how long until the full suite of programs is put in place, nobody knows. But the facts spell out what is undeniable. This government has lost control of our borders. Their decisions have led to disaster on so many levels. 22,518 people have arrived since they abolished the Pacific Solution Fact. The total number of arrivals since polling day, 21 August 2010, 12 months ago, 231 votes and 15,169 people. The total number of arrivals since Prime Minister Gillard assumed the mantle, 246 votes, 15,879 people. Fact. The total number of arrivals since Malaysia was announced on 7 May 2011, 11,048 people, excluding the crew. Fact. The number of arrivals since signing the Malaysian deal. 10,581 people. The number of arrivals since the High Court decision, 10,330 people. However you dice and slice the facts, they point to the same conclusion. Disorder, disaster and disarray on our borders. Despite Labor's attempt to whitewash and misinterpret the Houston report, the facts speak the truth. The Houston panel endorsed the coalition's policy. While Labor MPs across the country have said that you can't turn the votes back, Angus Houston says you can. The coalition has always known it. HMAS Anzac is now in the Gulf. I think it's the 30th ship since 1991, having replaced Melbourne. Uh, and our Navy have intercepted something in the order of between 1,000 and 1,700 vessels in the Gulf in extremely hostile situations. Our Navy can do it. If they can deal with so many boats in the Gulf, heavily armed, some of them by sophisticated terrorist organisations uh, out of Yemen, the government seems to think they can't do with a few or deal with a few leaky wooden boats. It is an insult to our professional men and women that this government has turned into a taxi service and a veritable NRMA. The US Coast Guard sent back 2,400 people on illegal boats last year, fact, and the Sri Lankan Navy has turned around boats. We have over 580 per personnel working in Operation Resolute. The struggles they have to endure, the difficulties out there as the monsoon season approaches and Sea State 4 and 5 and our Armadale class patrol boats with a 300 per cent increase in their rate of effort and the sailors on board who are being impacted because of what this government has done. Our call is simple. 
implement all three legs of the policy stool. Don't just take one. Order.